president has spent so much time at his Crawford ranch, it's been officially dubbed the Western White House. <laughs> Political analysts agree that given the amount of time he's been there, he may soon need a vacation from his vacation home. <laughs> Insiders say for that, he's considering the one place no one would ever think to look. John Stewart is here. He is the host of The Daily Show on Comedy Central. After the events of 9-11, he struggled to make the show informative, at the same time humorous. His efforts paid off as The Daily Show had been nominated for three Emmy Awards, including Best Host and Best Show. At first, America was under attack. Then, America fought back. Now, America freaks out. Think of a number between one and ten, but don't tell me. Is it anthrax? Despite the speculation, fear, and sporadic media coverage, what do we really have to be afraid of? General John Parker, the head of the Army Medical Research Center, was sent out to calm us. This particular strain of anthrax is sensitive to all antibiotics, penicillin all the way through ciprofloxacin. It's a very sensitive strain. That sounds reasonable, but here's how we hear it. Anthrax. The media, of course, must walk a fine line covering this story. With more, we turn to Steve Carell on The Daily Show News Center. Steve? Hi, John. John, this is in many ways an unprecedented situation for us. On the one hand, we must alert the country to the latest events, and on the other hand, we mustn't cause undue alarm. Scaremongering isn't the way to go. So far, the media has, in fact, shown restraint. There, and I must stress this, there is absolutely no need to panic. Patience, diligence, and above all, Responsibility. There, John, we have a job to do here, but we also need perspective. And in keeping that perspective, okay, that's, no, 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 that was unacceptable. John, would you excuse me for a minute? Many are calling this tape the smoking gun that the Bush administration has been looking for. There can be little uh, doubt as to bin Laden's culpability. What are people saying down there in Washington? John, reaction to this tape has been swift. <laughs> The White House issued an official response reading, and I quote, F you, you fing sucker. I'm, wait, I'm. John, I'm sorry, I misread that. That should be, F you, you fing sucker. You fing. <laughs> Your proudest moment, huh? Our finest, our <laughs> finest hour, the beeping button. That's uh, the Listen, center's end. Welcome back. Thank you, sir. Nice to see you. It's You're great. looking very well. I feel good, man. Pleased to see you looking so I good. I mean, I recommend it. If you, if, if I'm you getting can't, them, I'm getting all my organs you know, switched around. Just get that around. valve replaced, and you'll be in. You know, you'll feel better. People will, valve, will liver, kidneys. It's all going. <laughs> I want it all. You out. want to be the ten million dollar man. Exactly. All right, Martha Stewart. You heard us talking about her earlier in this show. Absolutely. Kudos to them. Yeah. Thank goodness they put a stop to Martha Stewart, who has been dragging this economy down long enough. That they should outlaw her. All cocktail parties where rich people might talk, right. those should be outlaws. Cigar bars, polo, gone. <laughs> Otherwise, this country may only never rich bounce people, back. Only rich people go see polo. Or they talk about stock prices. Yeah. Uh, this is the most insane, uh, uh, the seriousness in which you can gather very smart people from all different walks of the financial industry, journalists to congressmen to everybody to raise their Help fists in triumph. This, yes. It strikes me as we put out the <laughs> trash can that was on fire, not realizing there's a tsunami right behind them. It's just about to go like that. <laughs> I've never seen anything uh, uh, like this before. The, the idea that, that, you know, there's a huge difference between fraud and unfairness. Yeah. And what's going on with Martha Stewart? Yes, there's somewhat an unfair system based on uh, who you know. And I think uh, if you ask the chairman of the FCC, he might agree with me, uh, as his father is Colin Powell. Uh, or perhaps Mrs. Daschle, no, a who's minute. a lobbyist for But all I'm saying is nepotism, favoritism, inside information, all that, that goes under the aegis of you really need better friends. Yes. 
Fraud is a whole different thing. Enron, Adelphia, WorldCom, Tyco, that's fraud. These people got together to manipulate uh, an obtuse, purposefully obtuse system to make millions and billions of dollars. Martha just picked up the phone and went, Sam, is this, I mean, the whole thing is falling. What's going on? What's going? Uh, Martha, Should I sell? Doesn't really cure cancer. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I don't even think it works on colds. <laughs> sell. It's probably the only menschy thing I'm, Sam no. Waxel's ever done in his life. I'm selling, do what you think's best. Exactly. I mean, the idea that somehow, you know, and I love the congressman who said, we're going easy on her. I could call her down tomorrow. I could have my boys go get her. We could drag her down. I could put her in a trunk, wrap duct tape around her mouth. I haven't done it so far. I could give her a wedgie. I'm not doing any of this. Somehow they're, they're showing restraint. How is it somehow that Martha Stewart, they're debating whether or not to call her down, but Fastow and Kenny Boy are walking free on the plains of the Serengeti in their $50 million huts. Well, they came down and took the fifth. They came down and took the fifth, so then you stop? <laughs> these, these guys aren't talking. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Just take the fifth and you'll See be okay. See if Martha Stewart knows anything. <laughs> Ask them again. <laughs> Has this been great for material? No, it's been horrifying. Why? I mean, well, <laughs> it's, it's been somewhat great, but you have to understand, our, our uh, viewership is, is somewhat young. And they're not clamoring. We're talking about 12 or uh, 20 or what? Eight. Eight. Uh, they go right from Rugrats to us. Yeah. Uh, but it's not exactly, they're not clamoring for more financial justice jokes. <laughs> what, what kind uh, of jokes are they clamoring for? Uh, they enjoy a good legalized pot joke. Always have, always will. Uh, How about anthrax? Are they clamoring for They were. Anthra they were. Anthrax is over, man. We don't, we yeah. don't follow anthrax anymore. The, what's, what's the barometer you use and your comedy writers use as to what... I mean, are you looking... Do you know the sensibilities of your audience and so therefore... Uh, no, you know, we actually, and, and this may or may not be a good thing, don't think about them in any way, shape, or form until they're in the audience either yelling at us or clapping. Um, we go by sort of an internal barometer and intuition that, that we all sort of have as people who've done comedy for a long time. And that's, that's all we've ever gone by. All you can do is say, does this make me laugh or not? Does this make me laugh? Is this, d do I feel creepy saying it? Do I not feel creepy saying it? Is it the right target? Do we feel like we're choosing our point without being didactic? Is there enough balance in the show? You know, silliness versus something that might be more pointed versus, you know, will it be interesting to watch? Are we changing the pace? Those are the things that we will think about sometimes, but not, we don't ever think, well, how's that going to play at Theta Delta Chi? You know, we're not... <laughs> they're too, too old for you at Theta yeah. Delta Chi. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't understand their world yeah. anyway. So, it's always uh, instinctive in terms of what you think. I believe so. You know? it's, it's a bit, it, it, it's, it's like music in the sense that, you know, you're always listening for sour notes. And, and sometimes you hear them and sometimes you don't. The sour note tells you this is not going to work. Yeah, or that it doesn't feel right. Yeah. Roll tape. This is our first clip from Comedy Central. Here it is, The Daily Show. Now, the erratic movements of stocks has left many people bewildered. To shed some light, we're going to take you down to the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, where our senior stock market analyst, Mo Rocca, is standing by. Mo, thanks for joining us. Of course. Uh, uh, crazy volatility mm. on the market today. I was watching the ticker. Stocks were down 200, and then they were up 30, and then they were way down again. Uh, What's going on? Well, John, the stock market may seem chaotic to ignorant outsiders, especially on a roller coaster day like today. But it helps to remember that stock prices are based on a company's worth, plain and simple. Take a well-known company, General Electric. Here's the stock's performance today. As you can see, at 9.30 a.m. this morning, investors were convinced that this company was worth $26.50 a share. But by 11.30, investors realized maybe it's not such a good company after all. Maybe they're not bringing as many good things to life as they say they are. So the stock plunged. But Very then what, what's the impetus for it to rise up again as it does? Uh-uh. Well, you're referring to right here where it shoots back up again. Investors probably realized, hey, what are we doing? GE is great. They're the light bulb people, right? I love those guys. But then they were bad again, good again, bad again, good again, bad again, good again, bad, good, good, bad, 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 good, good, good. And at the end of the day, a little bit worse. It's all very scientific. First of all, I think you should invest in a bigger poster. Second of all, 
These well. are not small <laughs> fluctuations. I mean, where the, each fluctuation is billions of dollars mm -hmm. within minutes. I mean, how do investors stay on top of these fluctuations? Is there anything that the average investor can do? No. <laughs> is there any strategy that... that, that... <laughs> strategy? <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there has to be something, Mo. There's nothing. Well, well no, there's one thing. You have to scale back your dreams. <laughs> Let, let's you, be reasonable. What do you here. mean? But you, adjust your expectations for life. So instead of buying that dream ski chalet in Vermont, never retire. <laughs> Th thank you, Mo. We'll be right back. Mo is just fine. He's tremendous. <laughs> you can always trust a man in a bow tie standing next to something he made at Kinko's. <laughs> yeah. That's with, television. With a stick. That's the difference between cable and network. You would have had a network uh, Network, what? that would have been a virtual studio oh, uh, uh, with, you know, a floating with a graphics chart. thing that had been exactly. designed by the highest tech person in the building. Exactly. On cable, you go, Justin, can you draw a chart? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, how much, the, the setup there, I realize that comedy is boring to talk about. But the setup there was for you to say what? What was the setup line that you knew was coming? Uh, the basic gist of that bit was, uh, uh, what we were trying to point out is, how is Nobody it possible? Nobody knows nothing. Nobody knows nothing, but how is it possible that the stock market goes up 300 one day, <laughs> receives no apparent news of any worth, and goes down 500 the next day? Yes. What What exactly can we grab onto? You know, it was interesting, I was listening to your, your, uh, your panel before, and he was talking about, you know, there's two different stock markets. Uh, there's, you know, the insiders, and then there's the, you know, the guy who doesn't have much money. But that's not really what it is. It's the guys, it's, it's people who work in the casino. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's basically, apparently there are hedge funds, and correct me if I'm wrong, that are billions of dollars of guys going, I'll bet you that stock's going down. And another guy goes, I'll take that. Yes, that's true. Yes. That happens at an OTB. That's not, that's what guys do in a bar. <laughs> but, but not when they're talking about billions of dollars. Or not when apparently chief economists are running the place. <laughs> that's guys named Fat Tony. That's not guys named Greenspan. <laughs> that's true. Let me change the subject to the question that came up when David, I just saw David Letterman while I was away, interviewed by Ted Koppel. Right, brought right, together right. this whole notion. You may have seen that. Uh, David's like me, likes to talk about it. He likes to talk, but yeah, exactly. I was thinking of having an operation just to be <laughs> like my hero. Exactly. So you could talk like exactly. David does. I mean, he just said, I love to talk about it all the time. Yeah. I and mean, we had the same doctor. It is. Now, have you, you guys spoken about it? No, it, no, no. You should email him. <laughs> he Pictures. Said, he sent me fruit. <laughs> Did he really send you fruit? I don't know if it was him. I got something. I got a big thing of fruit saying from the your friends at the Late Show. Now, who that means, I don't know. That's so nice <laughs> that you have friends. I've never gotten any fruit. You've from never them. gotten. I fruit? get no fruit from them. You know what's weird? I what? get from them fatty foods. <laughs> Do you Isn't really? that weird? Die. You get fruit exactly. I get bacon, slabs of bacon. <laughs> it's not right. What does that say to you? I don't know. Yeah, but when David was thinking about moving to yes ABC. Mm -hmm. Did anybody from CBS come and say, John, no. get ready, get ready, no. get ready. That would have been nice. <laughs> uh, no, I don't You're think, our guy. You know what's interesting? I don't think for talk shows there is a real on-deck circle. Is that right? I think there is, the, uh, uh, within media speculation, there's an on-deck circle just because uh, there's so much material to fill and so much of, of television now is speculation. I mean, the truth is there isn't enough news to fill three 24-hour news channels and all the news programming that there is. <laughs> There's why. about 10 minutes of news and 23 hours and 50 minutes of speculation. Of talk, yeah. Exactly. That's right. Of they found a guy who thought he might be making a dirty bomb. <laughs> then for the next three days, what is a dirty bomb? Will there be a dirty <laughs> bomb? There could be bacteria on That's the dirty exactly bomb. Right. There may be. Yeah, exactly uh, right. So it's, it's all that speculation. Um, I, I think that's probably part of that. But I don't, you know, I, I think that that was a battle sort of between those two behemoths and and maybe they made contingency plans just in case one but of them didn't lost. Tell but they you. Yeah, they don't, they don't usually fill you in on that. <laughs> you don't ever get a call in the middle but of the night. Do your manager, agent, right. lawyer didn't call you up and say, no. Think about this. No, I wish they had. That would have been fun, wouldn't it? It would have been, it'd been kind of exciting. But you don't get that like... Uh, you could have had a moment of Florida right. there. It's saying, not like being a substitute teacher where at 6 a.m. they call you and go, put on your tie, kid, you're going in. This is it for you. Yeah. Yeah, none of that happened. It's, it was very interesting to me that at... at how big a story that was. Unbelievable. And to me, that just shows how much the, the, the media sort of is, it has begun to digest itself in, mm -hmm. in almost a strange way. Feed on way. itself. 
yeah. feed on itself. Yeah, when do you moment. think about the next show? I don't. I show up drunk around five. Whatever happens, <laughs> Just happens. Say, give me a cup of coffee uh, and I'll be ready exactly. to go. <laughs> <laughs> Someone shower I can, me. I can handle this. Come on. Uh, I'm ready. <laughs> well, I think that it's, it's, we're always, it's a grind. I mean, yeah. it, it really is. You know, some days uh, the show is, is uh, ignited by inspiration and other days it's, it's cobbled together with, with a, uh, comedy like and, material and, but do you, exp you do you look at yourself and say that's the way it's got to be I mean some days oh, you're sure. gonna knock it out of the park and sure, therefore sure. you walk away feeling wow and right. other days for that night, for that and night then you, you know it's yeah. a short-term phenomenon sure because yeah. you know and, and you don't get upset and you don't go crazy because you know it's the law of averages you yes. know? If you look television at, you look is at baseball. an unforgiving mistress <laughs> that's right and you look at baseball I mean, yes. nobody bats a thousand exactly and yeah. you have to be able to live with that and uh, the longer you do the show the the less the more that roller coaster smooths out and the yeah. more you realize that those low nights will be balanced out by yeah. a high night and what we do after every show is we have a quick recap and we talk about hey you know we could have done a little bit better there oh you know what actually worked we should keep that in mind and we try and have like a little recap but nothing too strenuous yeah. because you know you could parse it all night long and it it it, it at a certain point becomes counterproductive. And loses its spontaneity. And it loses its spontaneity. Yeah. And quite frankly, you know, we've got to be there every day slogging it out. It, it, it would begin to drive us crazy. Yeah. You know, What's we can't the best that. thing that's happened to you? In the, I mean, in the last year, you were profiled in The New Yorker. Yes. 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 So now my, parents, on it. now my parents agree I am in show business. <laughs> or you only. are a success. Exactly. Yeah. Their, their magazine had their child yes, exactly. as a subject. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's a pretty high praise. It was yeah, that was big for them. I mean, it. it well, how about for you? I don't read that. It's very, very too, too high too, for me. Too, yeah. Every now and again, I look at a cartoon and I'll think, I know that's sardonic. That's but, pretty good though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, I was I was. We're very flattered about it, but again, I also I mean, there's a certain realization that I have that we're all part of a game, supporting each other. That in the way that. It's a symbiotic relationship in the way that lobbyists and, and, and the government sort of operate yeah. in that, you know, uh, we want to take each other to task every now and again, but I think we both understand right. that we are feeding off the same golden teat, so to speak. <laughs> teat, yes. Uh, and, uh, uh, golden teat. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I do think that there's a, a, an understanding. They've got to write about something, and I'm glad that they got around to us and that they had a favorable opinion of it, but I don't uh, look upon it as any grand validation of, of what we do or what we are because I know tomorrow they may have to turn around and write something bad that's just that's just unfortunately the and nature it's happened of to everybody you know and I know absolutely everybody you know I'm yeah. convinced Johnny Carson at some point in his life had something negative absolutely. about it yeah I think that part of it is the backlash is is in some respects part of the life cycle of what you do in show business and you know uh, uh, to have the ability to be recognized uh, in the field enough to have somebody start writing how they're sick of you is in some respects a privilege <laughs> it is, that's right. uh, too much of one thing exactly it's not a good thing uh, yeah. are you obsessive uh, uh, yes I would say so <laughs> I would say so and yet here's the beautiful part not compulsive <laughs> no no I'm obsessive once <laughs> and I never do it again yeah. you uh, had one obsession in your once. life and that yeah. was it no I, I think uh, I think so but I think as I get older that melt as as I begin to see life is uh, somewhat fuller than what I had originally uh, initially thought it may be, I think that that eases that compulsion. Mm -hmm. I don't smoke anymore. Um, a, lot, a lot of the more negative behaviors that I used to do, I don't do anymore because I'm starting to realize, you know, this whole getting older thing and you can have a full life. Yeah. Maybe I don't want to die so young. Right, right. walking in the park. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I mean, there are a whole lot of other stuff you can do other than, you know. When you have a great show, what is it? You know? You know, it's, it's funny is, is uh, sometimes it's the audience in there and sometimes we say to ourselves, don't worry so much about that. Um, oh, the audience that tells you. Yeah, sometimes it'll, well, we'll feel like that, sometimes not. When I'm carried off on their shoulders, that's when <laughs> that's I think, a good well, sign. So, something went wrong. Yeah. When, when there's a Rudy-like <laughs> yeah. scene at the end of it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when Rudy goes to anybody to have dinner, they tell me in New York anywhere, it's like oh, standing really? ovation. Yeah. He goes in and he's having a private dinner party and walks in and there are 10 people at dinner. They all stand up and... Yeah. Tragedy changes life, man. <laughs> Doesn't and it? He could walk into the NEA right now and just, uh, uh, he'd walk in. He was right about that elephant dunk painting. That was terrible. <laughs> That's right. I'd forgotten yeah, about believe that. Believe me. We'd all forgotten that about that. That was the amazing turnaround. We did a bit on the show uh, uh, yeah. 
right after 9-11. He took on the Brooklyn Museum and the mini -A. Exactly. Right. Uh, we did a show after 9-11 where one of our correspondents was praising uh, Giuliani's speech to the United Nations. Like <laughs> Churchill, he walked amongst uh, uh, the grand, diverse, uh, <laughs> united uh, uh, Emirates. And uh, then we pulled out a clip from a show we had done six months prior where he was calling Giuliani a fascist. For, uh, <laughs> so we had, we had some fun with that. Some things change, some things stay the same. Change, some things yeah. stay the same. Thank exactly. you for coming. Uh, it's so always a pleasure to see you. Great. John Stewart, The Daily Show on Comedy Central. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.